Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's been so long since I've seen you in this type of thing. Hi, Matt. Welcome. Hey. I mean, it's you, been long since we've done this. Like, I mean, remember I, this did, during the pandemic. Yeah, it's been a Panda Veda thing we have to do. Uh, you recently went to Japan, and that's what this video is about, because I haven't been there, and I really yeah. want to go. But a, a quick update on me. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm getting a regular nine to five job or if I'm going full force with the channel again. I'll figure things out as I go uh, since I quit over at the Diz, which I did have a wonderful time there. I just had a, I just had it in my head to get back to doing my own thing. And you that's look like I'm you had a wonderful fun. time over there. I am very envious that you went to Japan. And let me just give you my simple take on it. I've seen things from China and from Japan, two completely different cultures, obviously. Right. With Japan, I look at the street when they do a parade and I'm like, wow, this, 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 you could eat off the street. It is so clean. It's crazy. And, and that's even so much more in the city too. I mean, really? you and I have both been in New York plenty of times in Manhattan. And, you know, how many times did you walk through Manhattan and you see trash on the ground? Um, you know, uh, just disgusting features, um, you know, and granted, you know, I do appreciate New York for all it's worth. But when you walk through the streets of Tokyo, it's clean. Um, and you would think because they have trash cans everywhere or something like that, because when people have their trash, they discard it. Right. No, the Japanese culture, they hold on to their trash until they can find a trash can. It's the same thing in the parks. You know how in the parks here we've got a trash can every 35 feet. That's not the case in Tokyo. Hmm. It's very, very interesting. And you would think it's like us, but it's not. It's They're just holding on to their trash until they they find a trash can. It just, the whole thing amazes me. The way, the energy of the people, when I see them coming out for that harmony and color off the, out of the fence, hmm. I feel the excitement and the energy and stuff from it. Well, I, that I and that goes for any parade too. Um, for, for those of you that don't know, Harmony and Color is their 40th anniversary daytime parade. Uh, Tokyo Disney is notorious for uh, creating a new daytime parade every five years. Five years. And how long have we been without a nighttime parade here at the Magic Kingdom? Oh my gosh. It's been we, are, a while. We, are, we are really due for a nighttime parade. Right. Uh, so, but Every five years when they create this new parade, it's it's electrifying. It's electrifying. Um, the the f happy faces that you just see on people is exorbitant because mm. everyone truly is having a great time. They're really enjoying themselves. They're the characters are waving to them. They're waving back. They're they're having a good time. And I'm not saying we don't have that here. It just seems to be more. It, 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 I, I will agree with you on that. It seems to be more out there. Yes. Do you see people having a good time here? Absolutely. But it's just, it's like this level here, but then it's this level in Tokyo. Who Who is on your shoulder? What character is that? This is uh, Chandu. Uh, he is from the Sinbad storybook voyage from Tokyo Disney Sea, which we had to ride six times uh, because that music, that music. So for those of you that don't know, Sinbad's storybook voyage is this boat ride. Think like small world pirates of the Caribbean without the drop um, boat ride in Tokyo, Disney sea. And the story is all about Sinbad's uh, many voyages, the book, but fun fact, the original version of the ride was actually met with a lot of uh, hate from the Japanese. They didn't like it. They thought it was very scary. And they said, we wouldn't want to take our children on this or something. So a couple of years later, they retooled the ride. They brought in Chandu here. And they also brought in Alan Menken to write the theme song for the ride, which is called Compass of Your Heart. John, when I tell you this is one of the best attractions I've ever done, that's an I've, understatement because this I've thing, only done it on YouTube and I can tell you, I agree. And, and I, I will tell you this shameless plug, head on over to Darth Vader, 92.com. Do you uh, have a video already of watching it? this on there? What? You have a video of it? Yeah. I already put this. I was up. waiting. Okay. I was waiting yeah. for your video of it and I didn't see it. So my video, I, I tried to do it as best justice as I can. 
I can't. I, I can literally watch these this video back and I miss it. I miss it so much. Even if because, it's copyright, I'm gonna put a little clip from your video on here because it's yeah, really good. I, absolutely. What what I miss so much with this and, and a lot of things with Tokyo is that everything, the animatronics, the effects, visuals, whatever they've got, they all work. How many times have you ridden Pirates of the Caribbean here and you see an animatronic or two not working? Goodness, before a close the Rise of the Resistance you ride Splash when, Mountain and it you know everything was broken. My big problem is Rise. Sometimes Rise, I have six things that are broken. I'm like, there's only seven things that are going. On. No comment. I know. <laughs> I've every imagineer um, I get, I'm like, come here. But you know, how many times have you ridden something here or in Disneyland for that matter? And, you know, oh, this animatronic's broken. This thing's broken. Oh, this thing's been broken for a long time. That's not the case in Tokyo. We so would you say across... Japan's tolerance for bad show is just much well, lower? Well, I, I think there's just, there's a culture shock. Um, I think there's dedication there because they love this stuff. They worship it. And I think that's amongst the cast members too. Um, so you're seeing the maintenance crews doing everything in their power. They're willing to put up the money, uh, to get these things fixed if, if, and when they need to. Let, let's just go back to basics for a second. Cause I don't even have a great understanding of the resort. You arrive in Tokyo. Is that where you um, land usually to be so, closer? You know, it, and planning wise for anyone out there that is trying to, uh, plan a trip to Tokyo Disney. I recommend flying into Haneda Airport. Um, that is uh, about 20, 25 minutes away from Tokyo Disney. Uh, if you've ever flown to Disneyland and you've flown into John Wayne, Santa Ana, that's basically the equivalent, but it's a much, much bigger airport. It's about five times the size of LAX uh, for that matter. What um, if you flew into Tokyo? How far away are you from the Well, park? that that is Tokyo. Haneda oh, is... Oh, Haneda is... There okay. Are, there are two airports in Tokyo. You have Haneda and Narita. Narita uh, is about an hour or so away. Um, and I fly Delta. Delta flies directly into Haneda from okay. Los Angeles. Um, and I would f do Delta in a heartbeat to fly into Haneda. Um, it's... And, there is a separate terminal that you fly into for international and all that. Um, and then what we did from there was we took the, they call it the airport limousine bus uh, to take you over to the Tokyo Disney hotels, as well as the official hotels that are there as well. I didn't stay at the Miracosta, the Tokyo Disneyland hotel, any of those. I actually stayed at the Hilton Tokyo Bay. It's literally right there in the resort complex of Tokyo Disney. And the Hilton Tokyo Bay is right here. Right across the street is the Disney Resort line, which is their monorail. They'll take you right to the parks. And there's two parks, a Magic two Kingdom parks. and you have Disney Tokyo Disneyland, which is fully themed kind of to the Magic Kingdom here in Walt Disney World because you have Cinderella Castle, um, it's done obviously on is a it different Cinder scale. It is Cinderella Castle there? Mm -hmm. It is okay. Cinderella Castle. Uh, and then you have the beautiful Tokyo Disney Sea, which, I mean, we knew going into this that Tokyo Disney Sea was going to be our new favorite theme park. And obviously it didn't disappoint or anything. Um, but I don't classify Tokyo Disney Sea as a theme park. I classify this as like, an experience, an adventure, because it's not like anything that you've ever been to ever. It, now, it the, has rides, the water. it has food, it has merchandise, but there's just something about it that just the, makes you fall in love with this. The water that I see there, is that a natural, like, are you on a coast somewhere or is it all man-made? Uh, so you, the whole resort is right there on the coast of Tokyo Bay, which Tokyo Bay is uh, a part of the Pacific ocean. Um, so when you go into Tokyo, Disney sea, I'm 90% sure in my head, do not quote me on this, but the main body of water that you see there is man-made. However, when you go towards the 
back ish of the park, you will find Port Discovery. And think of this as like Tomorrowland meets the sea. That's the only way I can kind of describe it. Uh, but up against the wall that's back there, you see like water like flowing in. And I believe that water is flowing directly in from Tokyo Bay because Tokyo Bay is literally just on the other side of that wall. Wow. Okay. It's I just wonder, the, I mean, the it's... level of detail and theming that is in Tokyo Disney Sea is unlike anything you've ever experienced. I assure you. When I see the pictures, I'm just like, wow. Like, yeah. It's, it looks... it, and, and, and that's the thing, you know, I talked about it earlier. The photos, these videos, they don't do it justice. Okay, so Once let's start in at, there. Let's start at Tokyo Disneyland. How give me the differences that you would say the biggest differences between Magic Kingdom, Walt Disney World, and Tokyo Disneyland, or even Disneyland in California for that matter. What's the big differences? Well, first off, the big thing that you're already going to realize is the size. Um, you can walk through these lands and everything, and there's room. Think of it if they decided to build the magic kingdom right after they built Epcot. And, you know, we love Epcot because we were able to walk around, you know, you don't have to basically dodge people left and right. Most of the time uh, that's, you know, that's perfectly the case of what you get at Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney sea for that matter is you have these expanded walkways. Um, I, we joked about it too. Um, we were walking over by, uh, Peter Pan's flight and surprisingly Haunted Mansion is just right across the street from Peter Pan's flight. But the amount of space that you have between those two, it's like take, take your local street that you have right outside your house and multiply it by three. It's that okay. wide. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's uh, the what other attractions part? are in their Disneyland that we don't have. Um, they have several. So most notably, you have the newest one, which is Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. I, I know you've oh. seen video footage of that. John, when I tell you this is one of the coolest Fantasyland attractions that we've ever And very had. different. Like, you stay for a while in a room and get entertained right. rather and than just... I don't. I still don't know how I feel about something like that. Like, because, like, for example, the um, something there scene. You're yeah, in, that feels a little long. And, I, you know, you're in there for a good solid minute. I, I on the video, I said the same thing. Like, All right, it's, it's great. I'm done now. But it makes up for it because you have these amazing animatronics. That I, I mean, his transformation effect is incredible. We still don't know how it works. All we I, can I, think of is it's like a Pepper's Ghost effect kind of thing, like you would see in the Haunted Mansion. But I'm looking around and I'm looking for the details and I can't find it. Yeah. That's one thing that was very clear when I was in Tokyo was that um, another good example of that was in the pre-show for their Tower of Terror. They had Their Tower of Terror is completely different than ours. It's all themed to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. And Harrison Hightower, who looks like Joe Rohde, by the way, um, has this tiki statue and i'm gonna butcher the name but it was like shiriki utunu um it, don't quote me i i i'm terrible at pronunciation um but this tiki comes to life and that's what curses the high tower hotel that you're a part of for tower of terror and in the pre-show you actually see the tiki right there in front of you and it's a physical thing it's not a projection it's a physical thing but all of a sudden, something happens, and the tiki literally disappears before your very eyes. I still, I, we wrote it three times. I can't figure out how they do it. Even and when they tell you how they do it, these things throughout the resort where it's like, you know, I could come here and I could say, oh yeah, I know how they do that. I know who that how, how that works. I don't know how it works out there. Hmm. And it's just, it's fascinating to look at it that way. Do they have, uh, okay, so they don't have Small World. They have the Aladdin yep. ride. They have and Small in, World. Oh, they small do. World is actually interesting out there. It has the facade of Disneyland's, but you go inside to board your boat 
just like it would be here at Disney World. And they have added the Disney characters, just like Disneyland's, but there's more of them. There's about twice as many. Audio still giving a little nod to those characters? A little bit, yeah. Like you'll hear, I, I think, um, Anna and Elsa are in there and you hear like a little chime of Let It Go. I'll have a video of that coming out very soon too so you can get a good look mm -hmm. at that. Um, I, and I love the artwork that they have inside. Um, you know the uh, Disney artist Joey Chu? Yes. He designed all of that artwork in there. Wow. And it's absolutely gorgeous. There are absolutely other, gorgeous. other attractions in there that we don't have. Uh, Pooh's Honey Hunt. Oh, which I don't even so get me excited for. started. I have a big problem with our poo that it's just poo. It's, so, it's, it's cardboard. So it's so basic because it was built in the late nineties. But then you look at Pooh's Honey Hunt that was built at the same time. There's no excuse. If no. We, if we demanded because better, we'd get better. Oriental Land Company puts the money up. Um, if you, you remember watching the Imagineering story and yeah. when they're talking about building Tokyo Disney Sea at the same time they were building California Adventure. Yep. It's fascinating to look at the amazing money the amount of money that they put up for this amazing park in Japan at the same time they built a POS in uh, because California. Because we're okay with it. We don't know any better. If everybody went and watched the video on Pooh's Honey Hunt from Japan, you'd look at ours and go, what are we doing? And fun here? fact, that was the very first trackless dark ride really? ever made. It was built in 2001 and it still holds up to this day. I still can't believe we have like cardboard things that pop up. And they have animatronics out the wazoo in there. Who is breathing and looks real. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, there's this one effect that, you know, I'll talk about. So spoilers, you know, close your, cover your ears if you don't really want to know it. But you can also watch the video too and you'll be able to see it. Is, and these are all on Matt's website, Darth Vader Darth 92 Vader 92 com, com. His YouTube you, channel. <laughs> Thank you for that URL. Um, but you'll go in and you'll see uh tigger bouncing. Okay. Now the projection, it, it bounces, but there are these practical trees, if you will, that are around there and they're bouncing too with the screen in time, as well as your honey pot that you're in is bouncing as well. So the, um, the amount of time and effort that went into that is astounding. Creative engineering is at its best, yeah. It, it Walt Disney Imagineering at their best. That's exactly how and it's I just think. money. We could have it too. It's money. Yeah. We decided um, it's not worth it. Hopefully, one day we'll we'll get as spoiled and say yeah. no. We demand much better now, attractions. There is something out there that still exists that we used to have: Splash Mountain. Oh, that's are they? They're not even talking about changing. They're not that? even talking about it. Splash Mountain will stay out there by by all accounts right now. It's a, um, yeah, it's a culture thing, huh? But Splash Mountain is just, we, we, we kept joking around by saying, you know, going on like Pirates, Haunted Mansion, Splash Mountain, and saying this is the superior version. Splash Mountain, absolutely, it's the superior version. Really? It makes hours before it closed, and Disneyland's, you know, and Disneyland's closes uh, next week, actually. Um, it makes both of ours look, Terrible. Sad. Absolutely, positively terrible. Um, what about their again, pirates? I know it's not the pirates in China that that is amazing. Right. How is that, their pirates? That one that you're thinking of in, is, is in Shanghai. Right. Um, out, the one in Tokyo is very similar to Disneyland's. Same type of setup and everything. Um, but again, everything works in there. Imagine riding pirates and saying, wow, everything's working. And it looks and gorgeous. English they did just a problem? Have an eight month refurb on it too. I will say that. Okay. English. Most people are speaking English and you're trying to do a little bit of Japanese. Give me the whole language thing. I will say this. Um, I am a big advocator of when you go to a foreign country, you should do your best to understand the basics. Okay. 
Just like when you come to the U.S., I don't expect you to speak fluent English. English is a very difficult language. All languages are very difficult. But if you can at least speak the basics, then I will uh, be respectful of you. Um, and I, I see that extremely evident in Japan. Um, if you make just a tiny bit of effort to just say, Konnichiwa, good afternoon. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Uh, suimasen. Excuse oh, me. You remembered a lot. Good. I mean, well, I mean, you know, we and basically they, learned it before we went out there. But the looks on their faces, because uh, it, I'll tell you a quick story. It was uh, our second day in Tokyo Disney Sea, and we go to the uh, merchandise shop where they're actually selling some chandus. And Megan, you got my me wife, a chandu. Thank you. I can't wait to pick it up. <laughs> Uh, maybe we need to stop this right now. No. Uh, Megan, my wife, is uh, paying for some merchandise. And there's a Westerner, us, uh, American, in front of them. Uh, the woman says, uh, Konnichiwa. And the woman, the Westerner says, hello. Okay. She pays for everything. Megan walks up. And the woman says, Konnichiwa. And Megan said, wait a minute. It's 10 in the morning. Ohio gazaimas. That's good morning. Konnichiwa, you say, after 12 o'clock. And this woman lit up like a Christmas tree and started speaking to Megan in fluent Japanese, thinking that she actually understood Japanese. <laughs> and Megan was like, no, 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 no. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> but... If you're very worried, and I was very worried about, you know, Japanese being the primary language out there. Don't be. Okay. Yeah, the attraction they, seemed to be in English, which boggles half my mind. And half is what I would say. Yeah. Some things are in English, some things are in Japanese, but don't worry so much about that. Um, you know, me coming from an operations background, you know, I thought, okay, how are they going to be able to communicate? Like, what row should I go to on this vehicle? Um, you know, other things. You know, I knew that when we boarded, like, let's say Sinbad, you know, she was saying, how many in your party? And I would say, I would put up two fingers and say, ni, which is two. Okay. And then she would say, however you say it in Japanese, but do this to symbolize row six. Oh, or she okay. walk he or she would walk you over to the row and say, "This is where you want to go." They're extremely helpful out there. So, to all those people that could be watching this right now and saying you're worried about going out there and having the language barrier, don't be. Don't be. I know this with the parade. Waiting. Like harmony and color, it's half you know English, but the cat I mean, the characters are speaking Japanese, and I love it. I just think it's it's the I same thing it's in the Sea of so Dreams, weird. the big nighttime show that's at Tokyo Disney Sea. The main song is sung in the show in English, but then after the show, in like this post show, if you will, it's sung in Japanese. That's great. Yeah. So you so, have so that let's, half and half. So let's move over to Disney City. You walk in. What do you look at when you first walk in there? What's the is the is that mountain the icon like the castle? What is that, the that would so the the volcano? It's not a mountain. It's a volcano. It's called Mount Prometheus. That is okay. your, you know, studying theme park and attraction management. I know you're going to laugh at this because I bet you you haven't heard this term before. That's that would be called the weenie of the theme park. Have you ever heard that term? Nope. The first time I heard it in my theme park management class in college, I, I started giggling because I'm like a little six year old saying, oh, he said weenie. No, no, no. That's actually a terminology that we use in theme parks like the Cinderella Castle. It's a weenie. It's it's something that attracts you to the rest of the park. Are they thinking of like a dog after a hot dog? Like a dog? I, maybe. Going to get the weenie? I, can't, I can't for the life of me remember exactly okay. from college. Um, but that would be the icon of the park. Okay. Um, but that's not really the first thing that you see as you walk in. You see this globe 
that they call the aquasphere. Um, and it's this little like central courtyard area too um, that you come into. And then you go underneath what is the Miracosta Hotel right there. And then you're greeted to this spectacular view of Mount Prometheus. And then you see the rest of the park. The Tokyo Disney Sea, the best way I can describe it is think of Islands of Adventure where you have these different ports of call. But the ports of call to Tokyo Disney Sea are these destinations that you can visit. So you have, right as you walk in there, Porto Paradiso, which is basically Venice. Okay, You're, You can go to the Zambini Brothers Ristorante. Uh, mm. By the way, great Italian restaurant. I walked in there and I said, sono affamato. And they just looked at me like I had two heads. You, you have to know John John Panette. <laughs> John Panette County. Me and Matt know it very well. We know Feed it, me, I'm we starving. Know it too well. <laughs> so, no, off um, okay, so yeah, we're gonna save the food because after we go through this, I want to talk right. about food. Um, that's my but then you can go then to the American waterfront, which is like this New York Street. Then you can go to the Lost River Delta, which is like this Aztec uh Mayan ruins. Then you can go to the Arabian coast or you can go ride Sinbad or see Aladdin and the genie and all of them. Or you can go to mysterious Island where you come face to face with Mount Prometheus. Okay. How many days journey to the center of the earth? <laughs> how many days did you go to Disney sea and how many days does the average person need to see the whole park? I will take tell it you leisurely this. and ride everything and eat there and just take it slow. We spent Three days at Disney Sea, two days at Disneyland, because we knew, you know, we were there for an odd number of days and uh, we knew we were going to want to spend more time at Disney Sea. With spending that much time, we did everything multiple times. We had, we tried an exorbitant amount of food. Um, we bought up everything. Um, yeah. I, okay, I would journey, say. Journey to the center of the earth. Uh, I like it. I mean, I see videos on it, so I kind of know what it is. But seating wise, you think a, a original rides like that are a little bit smaller because we're in Japan? Right. So we were talking about this before we actually started. Um, what you will notice if you go to Tokyo Disney and I wasn't I knew this kind of a little bit going in, but I didn't realize it was going to be this much. Um, the seats are very tight okay. um, to the point of journey to the center of the earth. And this is no offense to Panda, but someone like Panda would have a difficult time trying to get in there to ride it. Um, Raging Spirits, which is this uh, coaster that they have back by Indiana Jones. And if you've done, if you've gone to Disneyland Paris, it's the exact same coaster that they have uh, for Indiana Jones out there. It's the yep. exact same setup too. Um, we were ready to go on it. And the cast member actually pulled us to the side and she was walking us around uh, to a backstage area. And I'm like, this is weird. I don't know what's going on. And obviously language barrier. She took us over to the test seat to make sure that we fit in there. And I'm extremely thankful that she did because it was extremely tight. Did you if not I was on this? Huh? Did you have trouble? I almost did. If I was just a little bit bigger, height wise, maybe wouldn't have been able to go. All right, so that's a culture thing because yeah. of the well, Japan. I mean, and Japanese you know, are smaller. It's no, no short, short term thing. Like looking at a Japanese or Asian person, yeah. they're very skinny, you know. Um, so, you know, there are some rides like Indy, Sinbad, Beauty and the Beast, the Pirates Haunted Mansion. They're your typical standard seat. But there are certain circumstances like journey to the center of the earth, like raging spirits, where you might find the, that the seat is very tight. Interesting thing too, Tower of Terror. You know how on our Tower of Terror, you just have the seatbelt that goes across your waist? Not yeah. in Tokyo Disney. You also have it go over your shoulder. Mm. So that actually okay. keeps you snug in your seat a little bit more. And oh, so they don't want you to get the airtime. Time. Yeah. Oh, I like. And I was the like, I'm very time. surprised that we've never done something like that. But I like um, the airtime. But you know, and even like uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, 
that's a tight fit. And, you know, thank God. Now, we're and that was tight. Apartment. That was tight when we had it, even in the Magic Kingdom. True. Even as and a kid, I, lived, I, and, I remember. In um, Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. Good. All right. Now that we talked about not fitting on rides, let's talk about food. Oh. It is. It is. Okay. So overall, you would say the food is good. There was only one okay meal that we had. And that was at was, Tokyo Disney Sea. Huh? The rest was up above that. Oh, yeah. A- everything yeah. was spectacular. Um, we went to American Waterfront to the uh, New York deli and they had a Reuben there. I was like, you know what? Let me give this a try. I like corned beef. I enjoy a good Reuben. You and me, we've had better because we're from the North. Yeah. Yeah. You You got to eat Japanese. Did you eat some Japanese stuff? Fun fact. We did not have a single bite of sushi while we were out there. And I'm very shocked at myself for that. I would because I don't like sushi, but if you like sushi, how do you miss that? But did you get like, the alien dumpling things. What are they Absolutely. called? Absolutely. Uh, what are they called? I forgot the name. Um, they are called uh, green alien mochi. Is, mochi, uh, right? So it's it's these green little uh, gelatin things, if you will. Um, if you give me a second, I will actually pull up a photo that I have of myself eating it because okay, it's good. so so delicious. I will... It's sweet though. Mochi is sweet, right? It think of it like a mousse. That's in there. Okay. Um, it, it's very hard to describe. If you have a place called a Kura Sushi, K U R A Sushi, around by you, there's one down here uh, by Mary Queen of the Universe. Um, they have mochi, but it's not like this. It's, so it's not that, a meal. Mochi's a like a dessert, right? It, yeah, it's more of a dessert. Here, here you can see the green alien mochi it's these little and they call them dumplings too to the uh in into the english translation of it but there are three of them one has chocolate in it one has vanilla one has strawberry it's delicious and you don't you don't know until you open it up what it has Cor- you, you don't know until you bite into it that's, that's the other thing too you don't know until you actually bite into it so i have to ask you you ate at the italian restaurant and it was, it was actually good. surprisingly the one of the best spaghettis I've ever had in my life. Really? Was, Did, was it like sauce. really? What did Megan have? Oh, she had. I think she had the same thing, but she also got a. They call it a long pizza bread or something. It was like a French bread pizza. Yeah, think of it like a French bread pizza, kind of like what you would get, what you would have gotten in like elementary or middle school, as like your. High school lunch, but a million times better, obviously. Right. But the tomato um, sauce was good. Oh yeah, delicious. Okay, it, all the sauces were delicious there. Where um, else was a was like a memorable eating place? Restaurant everywhere. I mean, even just trying some of the popcorn throughout really? the lands. You know, we tried we tried the curry popcorn that was interesting. Um, we tried garlic shrimp, black pepper. And soy sauce and butter. Mm. They were really good. That actually sounds pretty good. good. And I'm not a shrimp person. But what I really want to tell you is the pricing for these. Oh, yeah. You would take a look at something like that. And you would say to yourself, oh, my God, popcorn. All right. That, you know, just like here, it's $10 or something like that. Not in Tokyo. Popcorn is 400 yen, which if you do the equivalent, that's about $3. But is it the same to them or is it still inexpensive to I, them as I well? I don't know. I'm I'm fairly certain that obviously it's working out better in our favor right now. Okay. But the cost of living is completely different out there. Um, we actually learned through the grapevine that cast members out there are getting paid equivalent to about eight to nine dollars an hour. But their apartment that they rent is something is barely like three hundred dollars a month. Wow, that they're paying. Okay, so it's a complete sh- a culture shock in terms of finances out there. Yeah, if you told people in Florida you'll have a three hundred dollar a month rent, but you're going to go to ten dollars an hour, I bet you a lot of people would jump right. at it. Right, you know, and and that's that's the thing. Like you know, Disney just here announced that the starting wage is going to go up to twenty dollars and fifty cents by. Uh, 2026, but that's all great when you consider what the cost of living is right now. That cost right. of living will only go up if we don't control that. 
but enough politics with that. Um, but overall, you will save a lot of money. Um, you know, we didn't talk about ticket prices. The Saturday that we were there was the most expensive day that they have at Tokyo Disney. It is 9,400 yen per person for a one day ticket. 9,400 yen equivalents to about $70. Pretty good. $70 for a one day, one park ticket, because there's no park hopping right now. But consider, if you will, a one day ticket into the Magic Kingdom on Christmas Day here is $180. Did you use yen, like, or could you use American money and they would transfer it right there? So the Hilton Tokyo Bay does have a money exchange there, which works very, very well. You know, just bring you know, 20s, 50s, 100s, whatever you want to bring with you from the U.S. And then they convert it right there at no extra charge, which is great. Wow. I'm surprised they're not charging you. Yeah. Now, maybe there's some extra in there. In the calculation, I yeah. I definitely okay. didn't notice it. And it didn't show me anything when they printed me out the receipt of extra fees. Um, if you're planning a trip to Tokyo, take my advice that I didn't take when I left to go there is bring some cash with you because they do like to use cash a lot. But now because of COVID, they're using more contactless payments. So your credit cards, the majority of credit cards will work at Tokyo Disney. However, you will have a lot of difficulty trying to get a hotel reservation from Tokyo Disney or buy your tickets through their site with a typical American credit card. Um, you know, I'm not going to bore you with the details or anything like that. Um, if you're seriously contemplating uh, planning a trip to Tokyo, I highly recommend checking out TDR Explorer, tdrexplorer.com. Um, okay. He's got a fantastic uh, ebook that you can purchase and every single little tiny detail about Tokyo Disney he talks about. That's awesome. Um, I had to end up purchasing through a third party called Kluke uh, to buy my tickets because they would actually take my credit card versus Tokyo Disney's website. But you could, could you buy them when you're there or they could sell out? Like there's they, a reservation system. There, it right? can sell out. I don't think it sold out when we were there, but it's much better to do it in advance. And I also don't think the ticket windows were ever open when I was there. Is there an app just like here that you can mm -hmm. go on? The app is very dependent because it will show you the wait times. That's how you also purchase Premier Access. They don't have Genie Plus or Lightning Lanes for the most part out there. They have what's called Premier Access. They're right now, as of recording this, there are about eight, nine attractions, including three shows that have Premier Access. Think of it as individual Lightning Lanes. You'll pay per ride if you want to use it. So, for example, Beauty and the Beast. You can choose to wait the two, three-hour line that it usually is, or you can pay 2,000 yen a person to go ride it at a time of your choosing through the Premier Access line, a.k.a. Fast Pass. 2,000 yen would equivalent to about $15 per person. So which, were, it was crowded. It sounds like it was a little crowded when you yeah, were there. Yeah, well... I should say this. It was crowded to the points where the crowds would flock to. Like Hollywood Studios, for example. You can go there on any given day. And yes, Rise has a pretty long wait. Slinky can have a long wait. All that stuff. Tokyo is basically the same way. There's no okay. real clear indicator to know if it's not that busy or not. Because you're always going to see these long wait times and everything. Um, granted, they've gotten a lot better. You know, before COVID hit, they would always say, you know, everything's going to have a three hour wait or something like that. Not the case anymore because they they truly do manage park capacity. Um, Journey to the center of the earth was averaging maybe like a 45 minute wait while we were there. Um, beauty, beauty on the Saturday that we were there was two to three hours. But the other day, wow. 75 minutes. Still, that's a long time for that ride. But what I loved about it was that the line was continuously moving. For example, we did Big Thunder Mountain out there. And Big Thunder doesn't have premier access or anything like that. So there is no expedited line unless you have their version of the disability access service. 
Don't ask me logistics about disability access service out there because you actually do need some form of a doctor's note out there because obviously they don't have to abide by the Americans with Disabilities Act like we have. Um, but hardly ever anyone was using it. So this 45 minute wait that we were waiting for Big Thunder Mountain was long. It, it was 45 minutes, but it was a consistently moving line. You, it wasn't stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. You kept moving. It was just this continuously moving line that wouldn't stop. And it was great. I, if we could have that here in the States, I would love it. I would work. Yeah, I, when it moves, you just, you're, you don't feel your it. mind feel isn't as focused on the wait time. Yeah. And are you it's undercover not. or is the sun beating on you while you're waiting? Or do they try to minimize that? They try when they can. Um, I will say this may is a wonderful time to visit. In my opinion, um, there were, there were some rain showers. May is a little bit of a rainy season for them, but you know, you wake up first off 5 a.m. is when the sun is bright and shining outside 5 a.m. Really? So thank God we had like blackout curtains uh, for the room. Um, but, you know, we're walking over to the park and it's maybe like mid 60s or so. It would warm up to the high 70s, <gasps> low 80s. So it would feel a little toasty with the sun. But as soon as the sun set, it went down to it felt like 40 degrees. It was wow. old. So you so need to work, prepare for both climates, basically hot and cold. Right. Right. And, you know, I mean, don't ask me what the conversion is with Celsius to Fahrenheit or anything like that. Um, but in the summer, you know, they usually turn up the water effects like crazy on Splash Mountain because it's so hot there in the summer. Like, so are you spoiled now for us? Like his Walt oh, Disney absolutely. World, like, eh. Yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, uh, um, no, I haven't gone to the park yet, but I mean, you know, just, you know, being at the park right now, because obviously I do work there. I'm just like, wow, we could be doing it like this. We could be doing it like that. Um, a, another weird little tidbit that we were that we saw where we were walking around there at night. You know, you'll have like chains for lines and stuff like that. They put these little tiny glow sticks into the center of the chain. So then this way you can actually visually see that there's an obstacle right there. Wow, they, that's great. They just thought of everything. They really have. It's incredible. I, I, uh. When are you going back? When are you going back? <laughs> We're tentatively thinking 2025 because that's going to be uh. Star Wars Celebration. And it sounds like with the, with the cost conversion, I mean, apart from the airfare, that's going to be the biggest nut to crack. But once the airfare is done... It's not like you're yeah. spending a ton more, uh, a ton. What are the hotels like? Cost well, what wise? I, first off, what I tell people is about 80% of my expenses went to the airfare alone. Okay. Um, now, granted, I did pay for Delta One, which is the lay flat beds, which I don't need to do that again. Because uh, even with those, I still had a hard time trying to go to sleep. Um, the hotel, I really didn't, I didn't pay for because I used Hilton points for it. Do you, do you know approximately what it would, would it be like? When you 300? do the conversion. Average is about two hundred dollars a night. Yes. Versus, and it's a nice at, hotel, right? And it's a gorgeous hotel versus staying at a Disney hotel, and it averages about four hundred dollars a night. Even so, compared to ours, averaging six seven hundred a night, some of them. Correct. So it's just you know, if you can get behind that twelve hour plane ride, if you're coming from LA, um, and the price of the airfare, everything else, it's smooth sailing. Yeah, Moon that sounds like a trip. I, I need her amazing. You know, I I, I could do. sit and talk to you for hours about Tokyo Disney, but all I can One... say is, all I can say is this: if you ever have the chance in your lifetime, go. One because last it's the thing, most beautiful thing. I I keep joking around saying, you know, they say Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. No, it's Tokyo. It's Tokyo I say nay nay. I say nay nay. <laughs> Nighttime spectaculars. There was something you saw that was different than here, right? Correct. Isn't I, I like... talked about it earlier. Uh, it's called Believe Sea of Dreams. Believe Sea of Dreams takes place on the lagoon right there in Tokyo Disney Sea. This is, we love Fantasmic. We love Happily Ever After. We love whatever they're probably going to be putting in Epcot, but Illuminations, Harmonious. We both kind of love that. This is something else. 
And yeah, a lot of the dialogue is in Japanese. So I can't really fully understand what's going on. I've done some translations to understand truly what's being said. But in a nutshell, it's Peter Pan and Wendy with the Lost Boys coming upon the second star to the right and talking about, the, you know, the formation of dreams and how characters that we know and love like Rapunzel, Miguel, Aladdin, Moana, Elsa, they have these dreams that just propel them into their life. It's gorgeous. That's pretty cool. The music is unbelievable. The effects that they have, amazing. It, it's just, I would, every single time I go to Tokyo Disney Sea, I will see the show. Mark my words. They, I will see the show. It. And you know, before you've sold, this, you've sold me, you've sold right. me before this, they actually had phantasmic out there. They really? had their version of phantasmic and it was great. It was a wonderful show. And I'm upset that I never got to see it because that really looked very cool. Just being on the lagoon instead of being in an amphitheater or on Tom Sawyer Island that we know and love. But this just the third, the final night that we were there, we saw Believe Sea of Dreams. That was the last thing that we did. I broke down in tears because it just, it hit me right then and there. What I've aspired to do for so many years, what I dreamed about, the beauty, the majesty of that park and of that show and of their cast members. You their saw what was possible. Are a dime a dozen. It just, it all hit me right there saying, this is the most beautiful moment I'll ever have in my life. And it can only be achieved at Tokyo Disney. I hope, I hope Walt Disney World raises up for you so that you can, I, I understand. And I know you from what you've studied and everything that you saw now. Oh my God, look at what's possible. Look at Tokyo, what is like possible and what can be achieved. And that should yeah. be a goal for Walt Disney World and Disneyland, in my opinion. Really quick before we do finish up, too, I want to talk about the cast members out there. Because I, I just... I can, and I can see it just from videos, like I said, right in the beginning. So Their ears, cast members are phenomenal. Okay? They're, they're waving to you with both hands. Oh, I couldn't... I can't believe just doing that and people waving back to you and stuff like that. That just would hit me so much. Yeah, there's a sincerity too. Like they are so happy to share the joy with you. Yes. I can see it. And, and it's just, it's, you know, it's amazing to see the terms, you know, we, we talked about it briefly, but look at what they're getting paid. Benefits wise, they don't get to come into the park all the time. Like cast members here do. They don't have that main entrance pass or whatever. But they're, they're happy. they're grateful to be there yeah their gratefulness it, it it just it shows every single time that they're there do you rem um really quick do you remember they, the imagineering they, documentary when yeah. they reopened for the pandemic how the people walked through the gate and just cried that got me and that will get me every single time i go now it really will they for the 40th they they gave us this little booklet that had these little flag stickers if you will that you could cut out and it would it would say in japanese and in english like you're awesome you're great thank you stuff like that okay and they wanted you to give these to the cast members oh yeah you were telling me i think this was this was our mission was we wanted to track down all these cast members that were just being amazing and give them to them they went ballistic when they got these one cast member even said to us uh, are, are you are you for real like they are you sure that you want to give this to me i'm like yes because you're amazing i think this is some sort of recognition program that maybe got. maybe they turn them in and if they get a certain but they amount. turn them in or something like that and they get like tickets to the park or something like that um but it's a genius idea and i'm so glad that i could just that they gave me a smile and I was able to give a smile right back to them. If there are any Japanese cast members watching this, please respond and let us know if there's anything like that with these things. And 
I would love some feedback Please. from I, I want it. I want to know. You know, Google Translate is a wonderful thing. You you put it down there in Japanese. I'll I'll read it. I don't right, know so how you're understanding gonna, me and John right now, but <laughs> I'm going to plug for you again. Darth Vader ninety two. I watch those videos. Go watch those videos. I'm going to plug my because self. This new camera that I'm actually recording right here with was the main focal point that I used out there. This camera did amazing job. He's with all these rides that that beautiful it camera that great. john's holding up it's a lot of money but holy crud and the light the light that it brings in is amazing Look uh, just to that. give a just to give a plug back to me again bigfatpanda.com i'm bringing content back make sure you ring the bell same thing with uh matt over here and subscribe if you're not but that bell ringing is a big thing because i'm trying yeah. to get to my subscribers and be like hey i'm back and i don't know how to do that and more importantly be you know we've been talking about it a little bit but we might be starting something up nothing's really official yet but we're, we're thinking about starting something up so i'm sure know. i'm sure by july we'll have a panda vader show with guests yeah. probably i think so you know because I, I think we saw and and you saw it too john we had a big turnout during the pandemic when we did these like friday night live things sure we had um, hostages yeah <laughs> people were hostage at home they had another um, watch but a lot of people have actually been private messaging me, not me so much on YouTube, but on Facebook too. Like, are you and Panda going to start something again? Me too. Maybe. Same thing. Maybe. I've gotten that a lot. So we will let you know, Matt, thank you so much. We're going to do another update soon, just about other regular things, but this was a yeah. perfect Japan update for those of you. And I'm going to try to pepper in some things in the editing and release it tomorrow. All right. Thank you guys.